Hello everybody, my name is Tim, and I'll be walking through the Comp 1511-1911-25T3 Assignment 1 with you all. So, I wrote the assignment for this term, and in this video, I'll be going through a quick overview of the assignment, your submission details, the starter code, as well as some other information that you'll need to know before you get started. So, what is the assignment about? Well, your task is to implement the CS Snake game a simple turn-based terminal game that was heavily inspired by the classic snake game. I'm sure you've all played the classic snake game before, but if you haven't, or if you want to play it again, you can click on the link here and it will take you to the Google version of Snake, where you can have a play around before you get started working on the assignment. In this reimagined version, we have added a couple new and modified mechanics that you'll discover as you start coding throughout the stages. Okay, now before we go through the starter code, let's quickly go over the assignment spec page itself. So on the right side, you'll notice a navigation bar. Here, you'll be able to click on and access the different headings of this page. So the first one was just the overview, this paragraph here. Uh, there's also the getting started section, which we'll talk about in a bit the program structure, how to use the reference implementation, uh, description of the starter code, uh, FAQ, etc. Uh, below that are all the stages and all of their sub-stages which you'll need to complete. And finally at the bottom you'll find the assessment section. So let's go through this first. Assignment conditions. Firstly, joint work is not permitted on this assignment. This is an individual assignment. What that means is that you should not be working with a friend or a peer to write the assignment together. Instead, you should be writing the code yourself and what you submit should be entirely your own work. Please do not use generative AI either, for example, Copilot or ChatGBT. Please do not share, publish or distribute your assignment. This includes during the term and after the term. Violation of these conditions could lead to severe academic penalties. For example, getting a zero for the assignment or failing the course and even more severely, exclusion from UNSW. So please just don't do any of that. Submission of work. So for the assignment, you'll be submitting your code in the exact same way you submit your labs. There is a give command here that you can simply copy and paste into terminal and that will submit your solution to the CSE service. As always, you can click on your submissions tab here and you can see your auto test history as well as your submission history for the assignment. Assessment scheme. Uh, assignment 1 will contribute 20% to your final course mark. Out of that 20%, 80% of the marks will be based off of the performance of your code. So. A couple weeks after your final submission, uh, after the due date, your code will be ran against all of the auto marking tests uh, on our end and you will receive a mark based off of how many tests you pass. The other remaining 20% of the assignment comes from manual marking of your style, of your code style. So a tutor will manually look through your code and give you a mark based off of the style marking rubric here. In terms of performance, if you finish stage 1 and get it completely working, you should receive around 35% for the performance mark. If you complete stage 1 and 2, you should get around 65%. If you complete stage 3 as well, 85%. And finally, if you complete all the stages, 100%. Now, there is a challenge stage, you can find it in the extension heading here, that is not worth any marks, but it's mainly just for fun and if you have time after you finish stages 1 to 4. Now, in terms of the style marking rubric, there are quite a few criteria uh, under each kind of style section, and not all of this is covered by the style checker. So I'm sure you've all done this in labs already, but we have a command 1511 style that goes through your code and quickly gives you some feedback on any style issues. Please use that 
but also please read through the star marking rubric because the star checker does not cover everything that is in this rubric. For example, it does not check for vertical white space, which you will need to add to your code in order to separate logical sections of code. Otherwise, your code is going to read like one fat chunk of code that is very difficult to understand at a glance. Uh, another example of that is comments. The style checker does not check for those. You need to add those in yourself. And that's why it's always a good idea to read through the style marking rubric as you're coding. Now, allowed C features. If So there are some illegal elements you are not allowed to use in the assignment. And if you use any of them, your style mark will be capped at 16 out of 20. You can find those restricted C features in the style guide. Now, if you have any questions about allowed C features or illegal elements or the style guide itself, please just ask your tutor or ask on the forum. Due date. The assignment is due on the 27th of October at 5 p.m. So that date is the Monday of week seven. Now, in 1511, we are quite lenient with our late penalty, which I think is quite nice. Instead of taking off 5% from your achieved mark as the late penalty, we actually just take 5% off the ceiling for the maximum mark you can attain. So, for example, if you submit one day past the due date, the maximum mark you can achieve is 95%. And that goes all the way until 75%, five days after the due date. Keep in mind that no submissions will be accepted after five days, unless you have special provisions in place. If you have questions about special provisions or if you have any issues with submitting before the due date, please contact the course email, which you can find via the contact us link up here. Finally, at the bottom is the change log. This is where any major change if any major change is made to the assignment after the assignment release, you will be able to see a log of it here. Okay, let's go back up to the start of the page and talk about the getting started section. All right, so there are three steps here, which we'll do now, which will allow you to just, yep, get started on the assignment and have the starter code ready for you to code in. So what I'll do now is open up Tiger VNC and we'll go through this. Okay, I have Tiger VNC here open with a terminal. Now the first thing we want to do is make a directory for our assignment. So what we can type in is mkdir and then ask one and then I want to cd into that. Now here what I can type in is the fetch activity command to get the starter code. So we've copied in successfully, and I can show that to you all by running ls. Yeah, and we have the file here. Now, you can double check that you have the file correctly and that the autotest command works by running the autotest command. So 1511 autotest CS snake. Now, obviously, the my code will fail because I actually haven't written anything in the starter code file, which is okay. Press Control C to stop the auto test. Now let's actually have a look at the starter code file. Oh, csnake.c. All right. So at the top of the file that you're given, you're given this program header comment, which you'll need to fill out with your full name, ZID, a date, and also a quick description of what csnake is about. Uh, below this, you have your provided libraries. And if you want to include any other libraries, please write the hash includes here. You're given three constants here. And if you want to add your own, which you should be, you add them below this line. Next up, we're given provided enums. Now, the one provided enum is the entity enum, which is simply for all the features on the game board. Next up, oh, you need to add your own enums here if you make any. Next up is the provided struct section. 
you are given one struct definition called tile, and the only field inside this struct is an enum entity field. That is what makes up our 2D array, which is our board. We'll come to that in a second. And if you make your own structs, please add them below this line. Uh, in the next section, we have our provided function prototypes. Now, you do not need to modify any of these because they're all provided for you. Below that, you should be adding your own function prototypes when you write your own functions. Finally, we reach our main function. So this main has a printf. This simply just prints out a welcome message. On the next line here, we have a declaration of a variable called board, which is a 2D array of struct tile. Now, our board is a 10 by 10 board based off of our hash defines here, which if we go back up, are both hash defined as 10. Okay, uh, after we've declared the board, there is initialize board function. So this given function simply goes through each tile on our 2D array and sets the entity value to empty. So our board is initialized as fully empty. After that, there is simply a print board call, which gives in the board and prints it out. Now in the print board function, we have a couple other functions in here that do some bit of pretty printing. And then depending on the tile that we're looking at, it prints out a corresponding entity. Okay, please notice that in the first print board call here, uh, we're giving in this no snake uh, constant, which is negative one. When you're using the function yourself later on, you'll need to give in the row and the column of where the snake's head is at, so that the function knows where to print out the head of the snake. Okay, below that are the provider functions that you do not need to edit. So this one is for printing game statistics. You will use this in stage two, in one of the substages where you have to print out some game statistics. Next up is the print game statistics with rival. This one is used only in stage 4.2. So you don't have to worry about that if you're not planning to do stage four. And finally, these last couple functions are just for the printing board function, just to make it look, just for the printing to look nice. Okay, uh, please keep in mind, you are able to modify the print board and initialize board function if you desire to. Okay, so that was a quick rundown of the starter code. Let's actually run the code and see what it does. All right, so I've DCC'd it, and then if I run the program, okay, so as we saw before, in our main function, all we've done is print out the welcome message and then print out the empty board. So when we get started on stage one, you should begin coding inside here. Before we look at the spec again, I'm going to quickly show you all when we run our 1511 style check on our file, ooh, so there's already an issue, and that issue should be, yep, the fact that we don't have any ZID in our header. So please make sure you write your ZID here. Uh, the rest of the code is already formatted um, perfectly for you, so there shouldn't be any issues with that. All right, moving back to the spec, um, you can find under here, yeah, in program structure, there is a description of how the program, or how the game will work. So the setup phase and the gameplay phase, uh, have a read of this in your own time before getting started on a stage one. Next up is the reference implementation. So you're able to use the 1511 CS snake command to run the reference implementation. This is a completely working version of the assignment, 
So if you want to do your own testing outside of the given auto tests and examples, you can run the command, type in your inputs and see what happens. Uh, in the next section is the starter code and data structures. This uh, we just talked about briefly, but if you want to have a read of this, there is a more detailed explanation of what each line does in our main function, as well as what each entity is and what is printed out. Okay, and finally we reach the FAQ section. So there are already a couple questions here. Can you edit the provided code? Yes, you can modify basically anything in the code, including hash defines, enum structs, functions, as well as the struct tile definition if you would like. Now, there are a couple functions I mentioned earlier that you shouldn't need to modify. Yeah, so all the functions below here, you shouldn't need to modify at all. Can I use pointers? Yes, you can use pointers. Uh, they are not required though. You can complete the assignment without pointers and the assignment was made intentionally so that you can complete it without pointers. Can I use X other C feature? Uh, if it's not taught in the course, please check the style guide. And if it says avoid, it may incur a style mark penalty if it's not used correctly. Or if it says illegal or do not use, your style mark will be capped at 16 out of 20, as we talked about before. Now, if you have any questions about this, just ask your tutor. But you can complete the entire assignment with only the things we've learnt, which I think is a lot easier than worrying about other features. Okay, stages here. Uh, there's a quick stage list of all the stages that are in the assignment. So stage one, the setup phase, this is where you'll be coding so that the, to allow the user to enter in commands to set up the board. For example, you'll be adding walls or apples or exits, etc., to set up the board before the game starts. And by the end of stage one, you should be able to spawn the snake in after setting up a board. In stage two, this is where we actually start allowing the user to put in inputs to move the snake. You implement basic slithering, so the basic movement of the snake. And then later on, you'll implement how to eat apples and how that unlocks exits, the points and statistics command, and also winning and losing. So by the end of stage two, you have a completely working version of CS Snake. In stage three and four, this is where you'll be able to add on extra mechanics that make the game more interesting. So in stage 3.1, you add an apple that allows the snake to reverse. In 3.2, one-way passages so that the snake can only enter a passage in one way. Uh, 3.3 is snake split, which gets really interesting, where if the snake eats an apple, the snake split apple, it will split in half. And then reset, as well as portals. And finally, in stage 4, this is where it gets really difficult. Stage 4.1 has a stage where you implement apples that explode across the map. And finally, stage 4.2 is where you add a second player, so that you can, you know, verse your friends. And as I mentioned before, there is an extension stage that's not for marks slash kit where you can kind of convert your code into a graphical version rather than a terminal based output. And finally, this is the video that I'm currently recording right now that you will be able to see here. And the rest is just the actual stage specs. Yeah. So please have a read of all of this in your own time. I would recommend going through and reading the rest of the stages before you get started on stage 1.1, just so you have a bit of a gist of what you'll be doing for the actual assignment in the long run. Yeah, and that's it for this video. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy and learn a lot from this assignment.